In this video, I am going to explain to you the concept of barter. Exchange. Now, what do you mean by barter exchange? I mean, today, if you want, you know, you go want to go and buy a copy or a pen. What do you do? <clears throat> so, there is a seller and there is a buyer. The seller will give this arrow means giving the copy to the buyer and the buyer pays money which could be in any form cash or anything to the seller however in earlier periods this was not the case money as a medium of exchange was not available so then how did it used to work so let's say there was a buyer who wanted to buy a cow okay and this buyer in turn had certain gold with him and there was a seller who was the owner of a cow okay so what would happen in this case is that the seller will transfer the cow to the buyer and the buyer will give gold to the seller. So what happened was that the seller gave one commodity namely cow to the buyer and the buyer gave another commodity to the seller in lieu of this gold. So barter exchange basically means exchange of a commodity with another commodity so one commodity namely cow was given by the buyer and another commodity namely gold was received sorry cow was retaken by the buyer and gold was paid to the seller so this is known as barter exchange. However, a barter exchange normally had certain disadvantages. Okay. So let's say there was a buyer A. There was another guy B. Now A wanted a cow okay and he had gold so the first first disadvantage is that time and cost to find suitable seller so what will happen is that this guy is going to run around and find is there a person who's willing willing to sell the cow and take gold now let's say this guy b was there he had a cow okay which he wanted to sell but he didn't want it gold he said instead of gold i need a house so what will happen their transaction will not go through because he wants a house while this guy is having gold so they will try and find a third person who is willing to sell house okay and is willing to take gold so then this will happen a three-way transaction but the time and cost that will be spent is going to be a big waste right the second problem which I have just discussed is that there should be matching wants. I am not using the technical terms. What does this mean? That if he has to sell a cow, 
he should be willing to take cold. Otherwise, if the match does not happen for the wants of both the people, then the transaction will not go through. Third, divisibility. Now let's say this guy wanted five ka. Okay? And he had one house to sell. Now let's say the two five cows, one house. Okay? Now let's say one house is equal to thirty cows. Okay. So then what will happen? I mean, there is a person who is willing to sell one house which is equal to 30 cow. There is a person who is ready to sell 5 cows. But the transaction may not happen. Why? Because how do you divide the house? I mean, you can't say, okay, this is my house. You take it this much. So there is a problem of divisibility which is very much evident in case of barter exchange. Okay, so that's the concept of barter exchange wherein you exchange one commodity in lieu of the other commodity. Okay, some of the problems I've listed down, let me point out some more. Then the problem which comes up is that how do you store wealth? Now, I have these five cows, okay, I required only three of them, okay. How do I store my wealth? How do I store all these five cows? Like today, if suppose you had two surplus cows, what you will go is, do is, you will go and sell them in the market, get the cash and keep it in the bank account. So storing of wealth is easy, whereas in a barter exchange you can't store wealth because your wealth might be something like a cow. Another one is common measure of value absent. Now let's say while we were looking at all these options, if I had cow which gave milk, now I might be doing only this job, I mean I can't do agriculture, cow feeding and all those things, but I require clothes, okay, I require food grains. So every time I have to go and buy this after giving this, I need to fix in an exchange ratios. Now how many exchange ratios will I fix for one commodity? I mean let's say for example if I give out the milk of my cow to other people, how do I know whether I to get one shirt, how much milk I need to give? Then how, how much I need to give for a shorts? Tie. I mean all these things were not there at that point in time. But just to give you an example, you might have to fix up hundreds and hundreds of exchange ratios which itself made this task very tedious. So because of all these shortcomings, there was something which came to evolution which is known as money. What is money? How did it come into evolution and all these things? We will study in detail in some of the further videos.